Welcome to Cisco Modeling Labs 1.0. My name is Craig Brown and I'm a Cisco Technical Marketing Engineer and today I'll be presenting an overview of Cisco Modeling Labs. The challenge that we're addressing with Cisco Modeling Labs is how do we test new operating systems, how do we stage new deployments, how do we troubleshoot problems and how do we develop new offerings all within a lab environment that quite often is limited in the amount of hardware that it's got. Sometimes scalability is a problem, sometimes budget's a problem, sometimes just going into the lab after having spent time to build it, finding someone's taken a card or to find the right cables or to find enough power or to find a rack space. These are the problems that people are experiencing just to try to get the lab built. That doesn't even mean how do you get in there and do the testing, this is just the, the startup part. So the goal is, is how do we build a scalable network how do we keep it within a budget and how do we implement it without having to go through all the hardships that we do when it comes to building physical and live networks. So the solution around to address these problems is Cisco Modeling Labs. And what Cisco Modeling Labs is, it's real iOS code that is built in a simulated environment using the same images that are built as you would on its particular hardware. So what that means is if we take some iOS code and we normally compile it for a particular type of piece of hardware. We are using the chipsets and the drivers and so forth that relate to that. So instead of compiling the iOS image to work on that hardware, we're compiling to work in a hypervisor environment. So when we talk about build, building a real iOS image, we really are building real iOS. When we talk about scalability, we're looking at the ability to run from one to hundreds of virtual routers. In the in some of the testing that I've done, I've built a 140 node network. And in the 140 node network, that's 140 routers, they were all iOS at the time, they were, it was running on a UCS server, and they were able to get up to be able to spin them up and build them very, very quickly, and have them all running, all with just the click of, of a few buttons. And the really cool part about all this is that when I build this network, the 140 node network, or any size that we need to build, I can then integrate that back into my lab. So what that means is, is that I can do physical external connectivity from my simulated environment back into my lab environment. And so that starts to become useful when you look at people that want to, say, push traffic from their external environment back into the simulated environment. If they want to do uh, security testing where you might want to do distributed denial of service attack into your simulated environment, or you might want to um, push malicious content in there, or even the other way around, push alerts from your simulated environment back outside to your network management. And then another thing that we see with people wanting to do is they want to take a physical piece of hardware and then connect the simulated network. And the ability to build and configure 140 nodes or even larger if necessary and plug that into a physical device and then have that physical device being tested, it's something that you just can't do today. And so it's a fantastic way of being able to do route reconvergence, route flapping, a whole bunch of things that you can do with a large scale network and testing a single physical box. So these are some of the opportunities that, that, that you can do with it, which I've already started covering. But to look at the slide a little bit more, it's the ability to build, test, and deploy these, these networks. And so what we're gonna, what we really talk about is one of the biggest opportunities here is the ability to build networks uh, in quite a large scale in a very rapid amount of time. So when I talked about the 140 nodes, we we're able to get that network built in less than 10 minutes. And I challenge anyone to go and find enough cables to build a 140 node network, let alone get them all racked up. But using the process which we'll go through in the next slide around, well the next couple of slides around how to design and build and how to auto generate configurations, you'll be able to see how quickly it is uh, possible to spin up these topologies. So people have also used the, the Cisco Modeling Labs to validate and verify a range of configurations. And you can do that because you can simulate your environment that you're running today uh, simulate that in the in the Cisco Modeling Labs tool, validate configurations. You can look at them from the visualization perspective and see how, how they would look from the from the protocol perspective. And you can verify your topologies before you've rolled them into a production environment. You can prototype new offerings and some of the discussions that we've had is taking your simulated network and plugging it into your development uh, application environment and then pushing traffic and testing the impact of your load balances and, and, and how your network would, network would work if you wanted to offer new offerings or, or provide new offerings um, across that type of environment as well. 
Operations people see this as the ability to reduce the risks and errors because they can go ahead and build the topology to look like their production environment and they can test to make sure that the changes they're going to make are going to have the impact that they're expecting. And then what it also does is it gives people hands-on experience, uh, not just people that are looking to, to, to understand it better, but, but also if in your day-to-day -day you need to do commands that you may not be able to do uh, in a production environment, this gives you that hands-on experience. And then the benefits around that is the lower cost of spending. So a lot of people, when they look at their lab environment, they have a lot of uh, aged out equipment or equipment that used to be in production, has now end of life or has now no longer under support, so they've moved that into lab environment. And, and getting the CapEx and the OpEx in for, to be able to get that, or getting the CapEx to purchase that and the OpEx to keep it running, becomes often a challenge with, with the number of companies. The ability to access these resources, there's often times where a lot of people, they're limited to the access of the, of the groups they can get into the lab. So to be able to hand an environment to your architects, to your engineers, to your operators, to, to, to anyone that wants to build a network, the ability to access this is, is a great benefit as well. The ability to scale these resources, as we've talked about already, that we can scale to sizes that you just can't do in a lab environment uh, is, just, is just a great, great benefit. To deployment, decreasing the deployment of these new services again, we've talked about that, which is just the ability to spin up networks, spin up simulations quickly uh, is a great benefit. And then one of the greater things there is the ability to do that on and off net, which means that we can, we can take that network, we can run it isolated within our simulated environment, or we can run that in our test environment as well. So one of the ways to understand how the network works is to look at this high level architecture and just to understand what, what it takes to put it together. So when we, when we ship the Cisco modeling labs, it gets shipped as an OVA and the OVA is installed into the VMware ESXi environment. And when you start the OVA up, what you'll receive is within that will be the Ubuntu 12.04 LTS, which is for version 1.0, which is the Ubuntu image. And then within that Ubuntu image is OpenStack. Within the OpenStack, we run virtual machines, and the virtual machines are where we run the, the different types of images. And different types of images can be iOS images, NXOS, iOSXR, iOSXE, in the future, ASA, layer two switching. It can be other vendors as well, traffic generator vendors, storage vendors, load balancing vendors, you know, any, any, anything that you can build into a OpenStack, a hypervisor, KVM environment, uh, will run within the Cisco Modeling Lab server. So you, so you run one version of the server, which you will be running on a on a say a UCS on a UCS server, and then the Cisco Modern Labs client is an Eclipse platform, which is installed on each of the users' PCs or Mac, and using WebSockets, they will connect from the client to the server in order to spin up and, and run the virtualized environment, or run the simulated environment. Now, one of the questions we often get asked is around: Well, if you're running that many if everything's a virtual machine and you want to run like 140 devices, gee, that's really going to take up a lot of resourcing. And the answer is, is that that in theory is true, but in practice what's happening is that under VMware and under Ubuntu and OpenStack, there are a number of efficiencies that are in place, and these efficiencies use a lot of memory, uh, memory efficiencies, a lot of page space reuse and so forth, and that allows us to get more capability or more virtual machines running than you would typically expect. There is a calculator that's available, and the calculator will show you how many virtual machines you can run under a set amount of memory, and um, talking with the account team, they can provide that as well. When we talk about how simulations are built, we talk about it in four different steps. And the first step is the design phase. And what the design phase is, is likened to going to the whiteboard and drawing a network topology on the whiteboard. And so what happens today is a team will go in there, they'll go to the whiteboard, they'll draw the topology, and then at the end, everybody will pull their camera out, they'll take a photo of it, and then they'll go back to their desk and they'll try and put it into a Visio or something like that, and then they'll go, you know, and the, and the process goes on. So what this lets you do is to, in the same room, go to the client and build the topology on the client and then maintain it there. And it doesn't have to be connected to the server. And what it lets you do is also is that once you've saved your, once you've drawn your network, you can save it and then you can export it. So you can share it with your colleagues and then you can also just take that configuration that you have and then use that for the next stage, which is the build. Now in the build phase, what we're looking at here is the ability to auto-generate router configurations. So what, the way that it works is it takes a template and it takes a number of parameters. So within the design, within the design phase, you put in a bunch of different information that you want. So whether it's whether you want to be running different routing protocols, whether it's BGP or OSPF, whether you want to have CDP or 1PK or different things enabled. It 
takes that information and uses a template to build you the router configurations. And it's in this way that we're able to build large scale networks in a, in a rapid way. Because I can come in, I can draw my network to, to whatever scale that I need. Then I can select the auto, select the auto generate and say, go ahead and generate me this uh, topology, which I can use as my startup topology. The other option you can do is, is, is to build or is to design your network. And then when you go to the build step is to select all the nodes and just say, do not auto generate on all of these nodes. And by not auto generating, what you'll get when you start your simulation is just a, um, a set of native routers, just as you would when you took them out of the box. So once you've built the network, once you've designed it and you've built it, you go ahead and you visualize it. That, that visualization part is, is that when we look at network topologies today, we typically look at them from a physical perspective. Even in the design phase, when we draw our network, we draw it from a physical perspective. But when we look at it from the visualized perspective, what we're looking at is the ability to visualize your network from a protocol perspective. This becomes a very powerful tool when you try to debug problems. Today, if you have a protocol error, you have to go in to each of the routers and try to work out within the router configuration what your protocol error is or by doing show commands and so forth. With the visualization, it will show you a graphical format of the way that the network is, is put together from that protocol perspective. And this becomes a very, very powerful tool for people trying to debug and, and understand how the networks work. And then finally, the launch step. And the launch step is where we run the simulation. And the simulation, when it's just running, will allow you to tilt it into the routers. It will allow you to modify them and, and, and change the configurations. And then it'll also allow you to save that and push it back out again so that you can export those configurations back to your, to your static environment. And the benefit of doing that is, is that once you have that in a static environment, is that once you spin up your simulation again, you go back to the stage that you were, to the configuration that you were running in prior to the export. If you make changes in your simulation without exporting those changes back, the next time you spin up, you'll revert back to the previous save change that you did in the build stage. So there's a great benefit here to be able to, to build a simulation using the basic build template, then modify it the way that you want. An example of this might be is if you want to do SNMP. So SNMP server is not part of the build stage, but you can go ahead and you can save it in your routers when you do the simulation. Now, when you have made those changes, you will then say export configurations. It'll save those back into your, into your static files. And the next time you start up your configuration, the router configuration will have the SNMP server command still in there, so you would not have lost it. The another advantage of being able to export your configuration is that you can share them. So you can take that configuration, you can spend the time to build it, and then you can share it with your colleagues. So let's say you're building topology to match your production environment. Uh, one person goes ahead and builds it, and then that can get shared across all the different groups, and all the different people. It doesn't have to get rebuilt for every single person. So when we talk about building images and we talk about simulating and launching these images, the question that often gets asked is, well, what sort of machines can I run? So the answer is, is that when you purchase Cisco Modeling Labs, you get the base product. And the base product comes with iOS and then the ability to run servers. The ability to run servers means that you can import your own, your own images, whether it's Ubuntu, Red Hat, Cirrus, anything that you that you want to run in a server environment it could be a windows machine you know it could be a traffic generator and so forth so this is just saying that the capability is there for you to import these other images so the, the basic product is the ios and the server and then additionally you can add on the ability to run the ios xr and the ios xe the other question that we get asked is what about nx os what about layer 2 what about asa and the list goes on the answer is yes uh, some of these are coming available shortly after the launch of Cisco Modeling Labs. The others will be a little bit behind. But the, but the goal is here is to provide you with, with a very, very rich array of, of images that you can run. The bottom part of the screen also indicates that this is a representation of the operating system and not of the particular hardware platform. So a couple of things to point out here is that when we talk about what you can connect today, version 1.0 of Cisco Modeling Labs comes with a gigabit Ethernet only. Um, we really what we're looking at here is, is the ability to, to test on the control plane. So we talk about the features that are available and what you can run. Many of the features are available, some limitations around anything that's dependent upon a particular ASIC. But if you think about it on the perspective of uh, features that are relating to the control plane, then that's the best way to understand what features are available and which ones aren't. The way to deploy it is that it runs on an x86 architecture. Uh, the supported environment is a UCS server. 
And the way that you decide what size UCS server that you want to run is based upon the amount of memory and the licensing that you have. So to start with the memory, the way that it works is if you remember from the earlier slide, we talked about the number of virtual machines that you can run, that each, each router is a virtual machine. So each router or each virtual machine takes a certain amount of memory, and therefore what you have to calculate is how many routers do you want to run, how many actual routers and switches and other types of devices you want to run, how much memory each of those are going to take, and then making sure you've got enough memory to, to cover that. And again, the best way to do that is to use the Excel spreadsheet which is a calc and, and use the calculator. And the calculator will work all that out for you. So it's just really a, number, a matter of putting in everything that you want and then working out how much memory you need. So the second part of the decision around the amount of memory and the amount of the server, as I said, is licensing. And the licensing is based upon bundles that you purchase. So in this slide here, we, we show that you can purchase in bundles of 10, 15, 100 nodes and then the base product comes with a bundle of 15. So if, for example, I wanted to run uh, 100 nodes, I would purchase the base product, which is the, the K9, and then I'd purchase the 100N, which would give me 115 nodes. The limitation on the nodes is based upon the Cisco images that you're running. So if you're running other images, as we said, there's the ability to run server images. If you're running those, that is not part of the licensing. So you can run as many Ubuntu's and Red Hats and so forth that you want. Um, the licensing is only around the Cisco, the Cisco images that you're running. Also, people ask about the remote client. So the remote client, there's no limitation. So you can run as many remote clients as you want. So as many users can connect to the system as they want. But the limitation you're going to be impacted by is two things, which we talked about in the previous slide. It's going to be on the server that you're running with the amount of memory that you have and then on the licensing node that you have as well. The licensing is based upon a total number of nodes that are running at that particular point in time. If you have a 100 node license and they're all running 10 users and the 10 users are all running 10 nodes, then you'll fit within your, within your licensing and there'll be no problems at all. If you had an 11th user that would want to start up another 10 nodes, that user just would not be able to spin up the virtual machines until such time as another person stopped those 10, 10 nodes that they were running and therefore it would allow the user to come in and, and run those. The way that we recommend people use this tool is that each user has a quota and then you can specify what quotas people get. Um, so for example, you may allow some users to have a high quota where other users have a lower quota based upon the needs that they have. Another way that we have to control this mechanism is an area called the user workspace management. And what the user workspace management allows you to do as an administrator is to log on and stop simulations from other users. So in the situation that there is somebody that has started up a large simulation and they've gone on holidays or gone for the weekend or whatever, you still have the ability as the administrator to shut those simulations down and then allow uh, more space again for the, for the people to be able to spin up new simulations. As you can see on the slide, the server hardware and the ASXi uh, software is not part of the, the bundling, which will need to be purchased separately. Uh, as are the XR and the, uh, the XE uh, licensing, which they will also be purchased separately as well. So this concludes the presentation on the overview of Cisco Modeling Labs. I hope that you are excited as I am about some of the great features that are available and the capabilities that it's going to provide you to build large-scale networks to run in your environment. My name is Craig Brown, and thank you for listening.